everyone. I'm meteorologist Valerie Mills. Thanks for logging on to my Fox Hurricane. We are officially behind schedule with our Atlantic names and when we typically see those develop our last name storm that was Ernesto on August 12th and we've had a really eerily quiet stretch since then. Our typical time frame that we see our F name storm that is Francine. We've passed that September 3rd and our next name storm our G name. We typically see that form by September 9th. So that's not likely. And at this point, we're two names behind schedule. I think we will take it. No one's complaining about the tropics staying quiet, but it is worth noting. This is a pretty amazing stretch where we're typically in our peak season. That is September 10th. It's been 56 years since we have had no name storms in the Atlantic Basin from August 13th through September 3rd. Remember, I just told you Ernesto was on the 12th. That's been our last name storm. So things have really been quiet during what is typically considered some of our busiest points in the season. So here's where we're at at this point. We've had five named storms. Three of those have been hurricanes. One major hurricane An average season produces 14 named storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. But we flip back on last year. We had 20 named storms for the 2023 hurricane season. And even though seven were hurricanes and three were major hurricanes, it was actually the least impactful season we have had in the US in a decade. And the reason for that, a lot of those ended up being fish storms, ones that stayed out in the open waters, didn't make landfall. But what has been interesting about this season, even though it was off to a fast start before this kind of slow down, all of the storms that have developed have impacted land. So that is something worth noting, even though those numbers are a little bit lower than this point in the season, we've already had some impacts from all five of those named storms. So here's what we're tracking right now in the Atlantic. We have two areas of interest. One of those is interacting with the Yucatan Peninsula, and we're expecting this to emerge in the Bay of Campeche, the Gulf of Mexico, where conditions are more favorable for strengthening. So at this point, we're talking about 40% chance that this forms in the next two days, 60% in the next seven days. And regardless of if this develops or not, this is going to be bringing some tropical like rains to parts of the Gulf states. Then we flip back Back to the open waters of the Atlantic. This one not very impressive, just some disorganized thunderstorms and only about a 30% chance for that to develop in the next seven days. So let's hone in on that first area that I showed you. That one has a better chance of developing. We do know that this area in the Gulf is kind of a hotbed. The waters there, very deep warm waters for a storm like this to tap into. So our Fox model, you can see this is by Monday morning, slowly brings that kind of large area of disorganized thunderstorms into the Western Gulf and then we're going to have a kind of trough that's going to start to steer this off to the north. So we look ahead, we start to see all of that kind of lifting off to the north. So this is into Wednesday and Thursday where we're looking at the potential for some tropical impacts, whether it's just gusty winds and some heavy rain to move into. It looks like southeast Texas and Louisiana. The areas are they have really been dealing with a lot of heavy rain really since Labor Day weekend right on through this weekend. So we'll be closely watching this over the next few days. We have several days to watch it, kind of see where it emerges in the Gulf of Mexico. And if we can start to see a better center of circulation, that will give us a better picture of the strength and the potential track that will take. Now we flip things over into an area that we would be watching for a lot of activity at this point in the season. The big takeaway from what we're seeing as a big difference here. This is where all of our storms have been tracking off the coast of Africa a little bit more to the north compared to our typical track that's much more further south. So as we're seeing these kind of waves emerge further off to the north, off the coast of Africa, they're first encountering all that Saharan dust. So any of those storms that would kind of be coming out on more of that typical southerly track, they would be able to kind of scoot on the southern edge of that Saharan air. That has been keeping things quiet. And also, as we check on water temperatures, where we're seeing all the tropical waves emerge off the coast, we have much cooler waters a little bit more to the north, so not favorable for 
tropical system. So really, as we're watching this main development region, that dust and these cooler waters keeping things very quiet. The typical peak of the season is September 10th. So as we look at our outlook, this is from September 4th through the 10th. We are watching this area here right in our main development region for the potential for some development. And again, this area out here in the Western Gulf. So those will be our focus zones here moving forward. We're going to continue to watch things and keep you updated right here on my Fox Hurricane.